What's up? I'm Troubletude. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you how to get better performance in 5M, fix stuttering, micro stutters, lag, etc. This video is going to cover a few Windows optimizations and in-game settings, but in the description down below, you'll find guides that should get you even more performance out of your system for better stability and, of course, FPS. Everything in this video here that I'm going to show you can be done without pretty much any downloads. I'm not going to be giving you any placebo tools that you can download and install, no crazy config files that you can drop into your game to make it look like Roblox. We're going to be keeping a pretty authentic looking 5M gameplay experience that looks good, feels good, plays smoothly with little to no stuttering or at least improved and probably better fps too all of this and more for a better more immersive gameplay experience so without further ado let's begin first of all before we even fire up 5m there's two things that we should be doing the first is clearing our cache for 5m which you should do relatively often it's actually super simple what you need to do is hold start and press r so Windows key and R to bring up this dialog, type in percentage, local app data percentage and hit enter. This will open up, see users, your username, app data, local, and in here, we'll simply click anywhere, hit F to jump down to 5M, then 5M application data, and in here, we'll see all of the different things for 5M to work. What we want to do is head into the data folder here, and in here, you'll find cache, server cache, and server cache priv. All you need to do is hold control and select all three of these folders here, then hold shift and press delete to permanently delete them, skipping the recycle bin. These folders can usually take up many, many gigabytes and it's worthwhile clearing once in a while. Of course, if you only really join one server, these folders may not be too big. However, the next time you join after clearing your cache, you may need to re-download a few plugins, etc. but that should all be handled automatically. If you're someone who server hops and you go from server to server, this is especially important as these folders can get super bloated super quickly, taking up tons of space, slowing down your system in general, not just 5M. Now that we've cleared the game cache, the second thing is to cap the game's FPS. While it may sound counterintuitive to lock yourself to lower FPS, you're not actually really doing that. Your graphics card can make as many frames as it wants and push it to your screen, but you can only see 60, 120, 144, 165, whatever your monitor is rated for in Hertz. I have a 144 Hertz screen, which means I see up to 144 frames a second. What we should do is cap the game to match whatever your monitor shows to make it overall more stable. While it may sound like a placebo, it can actually improve stability, especially random performance drops, lag, etc. What you should do is open up your graphics card control panel, for example, the NVIDIA control panel, AMD or Intel. For me, I have NVIDIA, so I'll open that up here. Now inside of this new window, head across to Manage 3D Settings on the far left on the Global Settings page and recommend scrolling down here to look for Max Frame Rate. Simply change this from Off to On and set it to match your monitor. In my case, I'll be locking it to a maximum of 144. This way, stability should be improved, but also if you're generating a ton more frames that you're not actually seeing, you could be wasting extra electricity, generating more heat, making your system more unstable, etc. This is just generally a good idea. Idea. However, if you don't want to do it on the global settings tab, instead you can head across to the program settings tab and do it on a program by program basis. For me though, the global settings page is good enough. If you're however using the brand new NVIDIA app, you can head across to the graphics settings page over here, find Grand Theft Auto 5, and in here, scrolling all the way down to the bottom, you can see max frame rate. Simply edit this and change it to on, then set it up to 144, 165, etc. This is probably a little bit easier, especially if you have the new NVIDIA app installed. I've got two entries as one of these is the Epic Game Store, but it seems like changing the option for one did change it for both. If you'd like to know how to install the new NVIDIA control panel, you'll find a link to this video in the description down below. Now that we're done with optimizing the game in Windows, let's Let's go ahead and fire it up so we can change 5M settings and of course in-game settings for better, more stable performance. On the main menu, before you hop into any servers, click the settings wheel in the top right and in here under game, give these all a quick look just to see what you may want to enable. A lot of these may either improve performance greatly or make things a little bit worse on your system. It really depends on how things are going in your specific setup with your game, your servers, etc. Personally, I have voice chat noise suppression enabled and that's pretty much it. Enabling the audio frame rate limiter 
can stop your audio breaking randomly while you're playing the game, in which case enable this. If you're getting high GPU usage, you can enable the fix UI lag. And over here, where it says streaming progress, display progress when downloading in-game streamed assets, not recommended for systems with hard disk drives. If you have a solid state drive, this is a setting I'd recommend you enable. However, it's just your preference. This only affects the process of joining servers. That's pretty much it. From here, go ahead and join your favorite server so we can get to customizing the in-game options for even better performance. All right, so once you get in-game, obviously what you'd probably want to do is pause, then head across to settings at the very top, followed by graphics, and in here we can customize the game. First of all, DirectX should be 11, render resolution should match your display, otherwise too low and it'll be needlessly blurry, too high and you'll be rendering pixels you don't see, then ANSI aliasing, FXAA and MSAA will both improve aliased corners, which are those jagged edges on people, objects, etc. And generally you should have both of these off for better performance. FXAA may make things look a little bit blurry. However, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you can try enabling MSAA by setting it to 2X and enabling NVIDIA TXAA for a likely better looking game. However, for better performance, just leave all of these anti-aliasing options off. Scrolling down further, population density is all your preference. Usually the amount of NPCs and things like that is managed by the server, but you can lower it a little bit just to get possibly better performance. The same goes for population variety. This we may want to keep maybe halfway. Then distance scaling, the lower that we have this, the better performance we should have in general in the city. At the very bottom here, we can customize the general game settings. Texture quality depends on how much VRAM your graphics card has. Usually if you're running something with six to eight gigs, you can leave this on high or very high for a really good looking game with practically no performance impact. However, on lower end hardware, dropping this to normal is probably gonna be better for you. I have a 3080 Ti with tons of VRAM, as you can see up here. So I'm able to push this a lot higher for a much better looking game with practically no performance impact. Shader quality, I'd recommend dropping to normal as well as shadow quality too, but as this is a role-playing game, 5M, you may appreciate better looking shadows, in which case you might want to push this up to high. Reflection quality is very similar. I'd recommend leaving this on normal, unless you, for example, record videos, etc. In that case, you may want to push it higher. Reflection MSAA, I'd recommend keeping off unless reflections are super pixelated, in which case you can push it to 2X. For me, I'll be leaving it off. Water quality, I'd recommend dropping to normal. Particles, also down to normal, as during scenes of action and things like that, your FPS can drop quite dramatically. Particle quality, I'd recommend dropping down to normal, especially if you're experiencing crazy frame drops in times of action. Grass quality, once again, you're not really gonna be paying attention to grass, drop it down to normal. Soft shadows, usually left on soft is good enough. However, we do have an NVIDIA specific option here, being PCSS and AMD CHS, which should work on all different graphics cards. This is really up to your preference. However, soft is what I'll be leaving it on with likely the least performance impact. Post effects, once again, you'd probably want to lower this if you're dropping frames during combat and things like that. However, having this on the higher end can result in a generally more exciting, vibrant looking game. So I'll leave this on high. Motion blur is your preference. I personally have this completely off, but you can raise it, especially if you're driving around in cars a lot. Motion blur makes the game feel a lot more fast. Anisotropic filtering usually has almost no impact on modern graphics cards, but you can choose to lower this if you wish. Ambient occlusion makes objects pop out a bit more with better shadows around them. Normal is good enough here. Then finally, tessellation for things like hair. I'd also recommend dropping this down to normal. However, turn it off if you have a really low powered CPU. And when there's lots of people around, you tend to drop a lot of FPS. This can help. Then applying the changes and confirming, not restarting, we'll head across to advanced graphics on the far left. Once again, making sure our screen resolution matches our display. Screen type should be set to full screen for the best possible performance. Aspect ratio is your preference. And all of the extra advanced options down here, I just recommend leaving them all off. That's it. Now, you should immediately see a grand improvement in how the game performs. I've already shot up to 120-ish FPS, and after a restart, it should be quite a bit better. Now, just keep in mind, I'm not using some crazy config that makes your game look like Roblox, as this is GTA 5 RP, and you'd want things to look relatively realistic for a really good gameplay experience, especially if you're running mid to high end hardware. If you're looking for crazy performance, especially on super low end hardware, this video is not really for you. However, the steps that I did show you previously should carry over. You can, of course, use 
crazy scripts and things like that to lower your graphic settings way down low, but personally, it just takes me too far out of the emotion to still enjoy 5M when it looks a bit like Roblox. Anyways, that's really it for this quick guide. So hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.